Hey there, I'm Sarita, and you're about to experience the modern approach to well-being where you get to establish the best and most important relationship you will ever have, the one with yourself. I'm on a mission to help you declutter energy and reclaim your power so you can be a magnet to what you desire. If you're looking for the optimal blend of mindset and healing, you're in the right place. My goal in this podcast is to share tools, resources, and practices that will help you along your healing journey. I'm so excited to be here with you today. So welcome to Back to Here with Sarita. Let's get started. Hello you and welcome back to another amazing episode of my podcast called Back to Here with Sarita. And as always, I'm super stoked that you're here to share these moments with me as I create this podcast just for you every other week. And so far, this podcast has had a total of two guests and I believe a total of eight episodes so far. So if you are new here, no need to worry. There's not that much you need to catch up on. And I actually intentionally make these episodes pretty short within the 30 minute mark when I'm by myself because I personally love bite-sized content. I don't know about you, but sometimes when episodes or things that I'm listening to are pretty lengthy, it's a little bit harder for me to digest all the information. So I like to keep these episodes nice and short and sweet. And the episodes that I have with my guest speakers, um, I usually run a little bit longer because our conversations just have a lot of juicy information on them regarding that person's self-love story. So if you have not had a chance to listen to them, please go back and listen because they are amazing transformational stories. Anyways, on the topic of episode length, this particular episode will actually be pretty short and sweet as I'm reflecting on my trip I just had for my birthday a few weeks back. So if you follow me on social media, you may have seen that I just got back from a trip to the East Coast visiting my bestie of about 30 some years. Me and her have known each other since we were 11 and 12 years old and we have kept in touch with each other through all the different moves and all the different transitions in our life. And it's amazing to have friends that you've known for that long. If you have a friend that you've known for pretty much your whole life, you totally understand where I'm coming from, that those are like soul-filling, bosom friends type of relationships. So they're super, super special. So like I mentioned, I just got back from a trip to the East Coast. At the beginning of the year, I had set the intention to have expansive experiences. I talked about this in one of my first podcast episodes where I was talking about my word for the year, which is expansive. And one of them uh, is expansive experiences through travel. And so that was one of the things that I did for this year uh, for my birthday was to have expansive travel experience visiting my bestie over in the East Coast. There is also something else that I didn't intend on, but realized that it was something that I desired. I wanted to be around a lot of flowers for the spring and I realized this because when I was looking at my vision board for this year, I realized that I had cut out a lot of flowers, like decorating it, kind of like the background and uh, it looks just really, really pretty and florally and spring and in my room as well, I keep a lot of uh, fresh bouquets and also dried bouquets. So I like just being surrounded by this feeling of floral and spring and uplifting. And so my goal for the trip to go to the East Coast was actually to see the cherry blossoms, which are really, really beautiful and very known in the DC area during the spring. And when I mentioned this to my bestie, I had said that I had the intention of being around a lot of flowers. She thought it was really cute and sent me a text message with the picture of Isabella from Encanto. She said that it should be my inspiration for my trip. So if you have not seen the movie already, make sure you do. She is the sister who, wherever she goes, she gives her gift of making things beautiful with flowers around her. And I really enjoyed my time there in the East Coast because I was just taking in everything around the beauty of spring, all the smells, the sounds, and the sights. So in that, in being within 
spring, immersed in the spring with the smells and sounds and sights, it got me thinking about the time that we're in right now. So spring itself brings around new changes, new beginnings, the movement from the season of winter to new rebirth. And I really felt for the first time in a long time, I was really able to take in this new feeling of rebirth and newness. I'm not sure about you, but I feel like we've been living in a trying time for a while. For some of us, a trying time has begun a while back and has been ongoing for years, starting like right before the pandemic, the shutdown, and just like the momentum like after that. So it's interesting to me to see the the cycle that we're in right now. So for me personally, as you may have known, if you listen to my two-part podcast around my breakup, that I spent about 22 months focusing only on me, healing my heart, coming back to self, nourishing my soul, and just a lot of time recovering from my split up. And it was during that period I felt like I was in this winter stage because I was so dormant and really cocooned in my own energy and pretty much like staying at home and being with myself for a long period of time. I wasn't going anywhere or doing anything in particular other than really being a hermit and taking care of myself. And it wasn't until pretty much December of last year and early 2023 this year that I started to come back like out of my little shell. And things really started to shift when I made the conscious decision to be outward versus inward. So me personally, I've really embraced the newness of this season of spring and the change because I've been nourishing myself and also have been ready for this new Sarita the spring forward. And so one of the ways I wanted to share with you that I've embraced this feeling of newness or the spring rebirth has been to focus on what spring symbolizes, what I like to call the abundance of. So if you didn't know already, I live in a community in Southern California called Ocean Beach, and our spring here is a little bit different than the spring that I experienced in Virginia in the South just a couple weeks ago, but there are also some similarities as well. The earth is more green, there are more sunny, warm days, the flowers are starting to bloom, the sky even looks more blue. And one of the ways that I personally love to connect with the earth is to take what I like to call an abundance walk. So a little bit more about abundance. When you think of abundance, what do you think of? Just take a moment to think. More often than not, people automatically resort to the thought of financial abundance or money. Is that something that you were just thinking of? And there's nothing wrong with that if that's the case that you did think about money. But abundance is just simply having a large quantity or a plentiful amount of something, which is what I just really love thinking about. And it could be literally anything. Abundance can be stuff like love, joy, and peace, things that necessarily can't be measured in this human like existence like money can. And so if we take off the lens of just that financial abundance, we will see in fact that there's abundance of all kinds all around us in this world. And that's why I love looking to nature because nature, aka Mother Earth, is literally the ultimate source of abundance. Just take a look outside, you will see so much abundance. And so the power of our mind, the beauty of our minds, is that once we start focusing on something, the more that expands. You've heard that expression before, right? What we focus on expands. And so with abundance, the more we focus on what's around us abundantly, the more we will discover abundance within our lives. So that's why I like doing abundance walks. What I'm speaking of is basically looking for reinforcement of abundance in our world. So for example, go take a walk outside. I like to personally look at all the sights, like feel all the sights and smells of the earth around me. Go on my walks and I really appreciate the abundance of fresh air, the fresh green trees, the blue sky, the feeling of the sun on my skin. I see all the plenty of like the beautiful spring flowers in bloom and I give gratitude. 
So I see visually and I'm taking in all the abundance of where I live. Another practice I wanted to kind of throw in there in the abundance walk, you can do this within the abundance walk or you can do this outside of a walk like this, is to get closer to the earth. So as we know scientifically, the earth and ourselves are made of the exact same molecules and atoms. So we are of the same material. And what I like to do to get closer to the earth is do a practice that is super simple called grounding. You may have heard of grounding before. If you haven't, I will tell you exactly what it is. It's basically a way in which we can connect to the earth in a powerful way. It's just the process of taking off your shoes and feeling the earth between your feet or on under your feet, I should say, like the green grass or for me, because I live by the beach, feeling the sand between my toes. And what's fascinating is neurologically, our feet have a lot of sensation. That's why some of our feet like can't handle like our pressure points being like massaged. If you've ever seen those reflexology um, charts, there's our feet hold a lot of uh, wisdom within our body. And so in fact, we take in a lot through our feet. And unfortunately, with the modern approach to having shoes or being unacceptable, be going shoeless, we miss a lot in this way. So I suggest as often as you can, taking off your shoes and really enjoying feeling the earth under your feet, whatever that is, if it's through walking in the grass or if it is uh, walking on the beach or if you're feeling daring, walking in the mud or walking in the dirt. Just make sure to clean off your feet after you go in your house because we can also pick up a lot of toxins through our feet as well, which is one of the reasons why I use essential oils on the bottom of my feet to help with immune boosting. So going back to this feeling of newness that is occurring at this moment, I just wanted to shed a little light on something that I personally learned recently. And you may be going through a hard time right now. So this may assist in sort of explaining like what is going astrologically. Now, as a disclaimer, although I absolutely love astrology, I do not consider myself or claim myself to be an astrology expert, but I absolutely love sharing things that I've learned personally from astrology experts. And I love to share it here wisdom wise with you. So one of the reasons why there may be some intense energy in your life or there's some breakdown happening or there's just the intensity of emotions and just a lot coming at you at one time is because for the first time in about 250 years, Pluto is in Aquarius, meaning, and I don't know like the planetary alignment and all that stuff, but explaining that meaning the last time that this alignment occurred it was like over 250 years ago and there were two major revolutions that occurred do you know which ones those are just if you calculate it you can probably figure it out the french revolution and the american revolution and if we think about the concept of a revolution something always sparks the revolution to occur like a series of events um, usually some kind of breakdown like all the things right something really intense happens and then all of a sudden everything is changing so if you're feeling this sense of intensity right now it's probably because there are forces way more powerful than any of us that are happening unexplainably out of our basically out of our control And for a lot of us, it seems as though we're preparing for some kind of revolution. And what occurs during a revolution is massive change, right? If you just think about the French Revolution and you think about the American Revolution, it literally created the system in which we live for today. So yes, I want to say that this time that we're experiencing right now can be really intense and difficult. I've had quite a few calls from friends going through massive breakdown after breakdown after breakdown and basically preparing us through for this new season, this, uh, this spring that we're having, this rebirth, this change. And we're going through these trying times, basically like you're going through the fire because honestly, like ask yourself, nothing can cook without heat, right? you are being called through these experiences to transform and change. And so you can let the fire consume you or 
you can allow the temperature to be gauged. So if what you're feeling in this time is at the level of intensity where you feel a bit lost or overwhelmed, hopefully that astrological explanation helped you. But also, I want you to remember the name of this podcast and the purpose of its message, which is Back to Here. And if you've listened to a previous podcast episode, you will know what I'm talking about. But in a nutshell, coming back to here is basically coming back to the present moment, coming back to yourself, coming back to your breath, because coming back to self is you here in this present moment. And in this present moment, you are a human with infinite possibility. And hopefully that helps you during this tumultuous time to not feel so alone. Also, I do have an offering for you. If you do feel called to obtain more support in this area, coming back to yourself or developing a deeper sense of self-trust within yourself, I have three spots open for one-on-one coaching that involves some really amazing modalities. Within the coaching sessions, you'll experience breath work because it's been so transformational for my life. I love sharing it with my clients and also EFT, aka emotional freedom technique, or as some people like calling it tapping. And each modality is excellent to help you strengthen that muscle that we call intuition and develop the best and most important relationship, the one that you have with yourself. But most importantly, what I want you to remember is that you're not alone. You are always guided, provided for, and protected. Well, love, this has been fun. It's a short and sweet episode. This concludes today's episode of kind of an introduction to abundance and this new season that we are stepping into. So hold on, things are getting real. You probably have seen that on social media, but I'm sending you lots of love today. Make sure to share this episode with someone if you feel so inclined. I would love to hear from you either via DM on social media at Sarita Wellness, or if you feel a call to, I would love to get a review from you on the platform that you're currently listening to this episode on. Have an amazing rest of your day and see you in the next episode. In the meantime, keep being the amazing you that you are. Hey love, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you adored what you heard, it would mean the world to me if you took a moment to leave a review on the platform you are listening to this episode on. By doing this, you are helping my mission to impact other women with their healing journeys. If you aren't already following me on social media, make sure to connect with me at Sarita Wellness to get your weekly dose of inspiration. I can't wait to be with you in the next episode, but in the meantime, keep being the amazing you that you are.